How's it going guys? I'm Matt Davis with Flannel Rise and today we are going to pattern a new gun. This uh, is from Upland Gun Company. This is their Venus model, 28 gauge, 29 inch barrels, a handful of the fixins. It's, it's a beautiful gun. This is the first gun I've ever had fully custom done, the fitment, everything. Um, this was built specifically for me. So uh, a real treat, kind of a a potential family heirloom. There's some really cool stuff on here we'll show you probably later or on another video. But in this particular video, we wanted to talk about patterning your gun and not falling into the trap of, oh, I'm just gonna put these two chokes or one fixed choke or whatever your gun is and not falling into the trap of assuming that a particular choke and a particular shot shell are what's best for your gun. I'm a firm believer that knowledge of your equipment empowers you in the field, right? And so we're here today. I have um, all the different chokes that go with this gun. Um, I could have got the gun with fixed chokes, but that gives me less tinkering, I guess, or less opportunity to kind of configure this for what I particularly want. And so I went with the, with the option to be able to switch chokes out, and I'm gonna be able to kind of fine tune this gun um, with my particular hand loads to what I want the gun to do. Now, there's a lot of ways you can go about um, patterning your gun. What I have, after tinkering and doing a lot of different stuff over the years, what I've kind of come to is setting the gun up to be optimal at the distances, the shot distances that I take when I'm hunting. I hunt over pointing breeds. Um, I've got a handful of short hairs, and so most of my shots are under 30 yards. And I think a lot of times we'll see people throw out numbers that, oh, shooting birds at 40, 50. Yes, you can absolutely do that. And I've seen it and it happens all the time, but I don't think people realize how far 30 yards is or how far 40 yards is. Um, that's, that's got some distance on it, right? And so hunting over pointing braids most of the time, if I'm not getting right up to the dog, I'm probably within 15, 20 yards of the dog. At that point, I'm inducing a flush depending on where that bird's at. A lot of times those birds are under 30 yards. And so by the time I get the gun mounted, I'm on a bird and I'm making a shot, they're probably in that 25 to 35 yard range, probably 90% of the time. And I've kind of got to the point that I'm okay. I don't have to pull the trigger every time a bird gets up. Um, I kind of have in my mind how I want that experience to happen. If it doesn't check that box, that's okay. It's just another bird, right? We're gonna, we've still got plenty of time. And that's kind of the fun thing about it is you can enjoy this so many different ways. So I have, I've created my guardrails essentially for how I need my gun to perform and at what distances I need that to perform at. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna shoot a handful of different chokes um, with a constant of the shell being the exact same. And we're gonna see how that performs. So I have set up a target at 30 yards on the dot, um, range finders in the truck, but ranged it, we're set up and we're gonna start off middle of the ground. And again, don't fall into the trap of improved cylinder is best at this distance and modified is best at this distance. Don't, don't fall into that. Um, use those as starting points as you're gonna be able to set up your gun. Improved cylinder or skeet is usually what I shoot out of the bottom barrel or side barrel of, of my double guns. That's gonna give me a open pattern. It's gonna be more forgiving. I like shooting fast shells with high pattern densities. That means that I'm shooting smaller shot size. Out of my 410s, I'm shooting eights and seven and a halfs. And primarily out of my 28s, I'm gonna shoot seven and a halfs and as well with 20s. I want a cluster of pellets flying through the air. If I'm not on that bird perfectly, I wanna have a good dense pattern that's gonna be a little bit more forgiving because the closer the bird is, the tighter your pattern's going to be. And if you're too tight, it's really easy to miss those close range birds. So again, this is set up for me, but um, so I have an improved cylinder in my right barrel and a modified in my left. And we're gonna start off and we're gonna shoot, um, shoot one shell. We've got a pattern set up down here on a backer. So let's shoot one of those really quick and we'll show you that and we'll maybe just talk about the results that we see. This is again, a brand new gun to me. So I'm not 100% not sure what's gonna happen, um, but I got high hopes. And what I do, I, this is a rear shooting bag for my rifles, but I just use this to rest the gun on. Um, I'm trying to reduce a little bit of my uh, human input. 
this isn't a precision rifle trigger. This isn't, you know, a two pound trigger or whatnot. Most of the time shotgun triggers are going to be a little bit heavier. And so I'm trying to make sure that I'm able to hold the gun in place the best possible and just to at least be consistent as I'm, as I'm pulling through the trigger or squeezing through the trigger. Um, the other thing to try to do is because we don't aim shotguns, it's a little bit different. So you want to try to at least mimic or mirror how the, the sight picture that you're used to seeing. Um, normally when a gun fits you properly, you can see up the barrel just a little bit and you're usually going to be able to float the bird depending on the impact, how the, how the gun's set up. Uh, most of them are 50-50. That means 50% of the pellets are supposed to hit above the bead, 50 are going to hit at the bead. And so usually you can kind of just float that off. So I've got, I think, I think they're a 30 inch circle down there. No, there's no way that's 30 inches. That's probably only 20. Um, it is a rifle target, but um, I've got an orange dot in the middle there. And I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put that brass bead just below that. I'm going to stack them like snowmen. And that will be how I essentially aim this gun going into uh, this particular practice here. So we'll put a live shell in here and we will let one eat and this looks awkward i just don't want to point my gun at bridger who's behind the camera so i'm not going to swing my barrel around all right so i'm just going to get into the gun i'm going to imitate what i know is supposed to be close to how that gun is just going to fit look and feel uh when i shoulder it instinctively um so yeah All right. All right, so we decided instead of standing in the extremely bright uh, light out here, we're about in the only shade here on the side of this dirt road and figured it'd just be a little bit easier to talk about it here back here at the truck. So the shell that I've shot is a three quarter ounce, seven and a half uh, Winchester load. Really, I mean, probably my favorite uh, three quarter ounce factory load out there. I think a lot of people would agree with that. Um, what I can see from here is the, the, the pattern distribution is actually really good, but I can tell that the way that I was in that gun, I shot it very low. So I was floating, I had the, the brass bead about here, well, here-ish, below the orange dot, antis anticipating impact, like I said, 50% at the bead and 50%, I was hoping to kind of fill that. I may have put my head down a little too far in the gun and flattened out that curve instead of looking up at it. Um, set a higher head and changing that sight picture is gonna change that point of impact a little bit. Um, been shooting my rifles a lot lately, so that might have something to do with it. But what we can do here is I can now shoot it again. I'm never going to assume that a single pattern is always gonna be the result. I like to shoot a shell at least three times and for brevity's sake, we won't do it here, but I'm just suggesting that don't just assume because it shot really good one time that it's gonna always shoot good. Um, some, guy, some guns like shooting dirty, some guns like shooting clean. There's a handful of different variables that factor into that, but overall I can tell that that is a fantastic killing pattern at 30 yards with an improved cylinder choke. And I believe most charts, again, this is why it's important to come verify this, uh, improved cylinder is kind of an optimal choke at that like 25 to 30 30 ish yards so realistically this is like absolutely perfect and what i would hope for i'm i'm assuming that the majority of the pattern was down here and if you can see that flipping around sometimes that's easier um, great great distribution there so we're gonna we're gonna put up a fresh target here really quick and we're gonna shoot that again and we'll see if we can repeat that here uh, I'm a knucklehead and forgot my staple gun, so I'm using electric tape, which isn't going great. Uh, but we're going to do a repeat of that previous shell. Same choke, same exact distance. All right, I'm going to go grab that, bring it back here. We'll look at the damage. All right, so shoulder the gun just a little bit lower just to change that, uh, that sight picture a little bit more. Um, and absolutely shot now I don't know how well you could see you probably couldn't see because I was holding the gun a little bit in place it's a brand new gun things are breaking in it's all matter there's a lot of friction like it, it took 
it took some squeezing to get to the trigger to go and so i obviously pulled the trigger i, I would imagine they're probably close to four or five pounds right now um won't dive off into triggers right now but that'll that'll smooth out the gun shoots fantastic it's, it's just a brand new gun um so elevation wise fantastic it would have been nice to show you on um on the pallet down there but i could see all the other hits in the wood and it was very concentric so this is the center of the pattern right here this is kind of the fringe of it here um, but it covered basically all this very very evenly um, through the core of the pattern great pellet distribution no crazy gaps or anything like that um, again speaking to forgiveness right this is an improved cylinder at 30 yards i still have a lot of hits even though i'm on the fringe of that pattern so shotgunning it's an instinctive thing it isn't precision it's as easy to miss them as it is to hit them but this this to me is really about as much as i could ask for on a good hunting performance shot shell choke combination in this particular gun so i'm tickled pink with that um, i know the left and right that's me the up and down that's me that just comes down to spend a little bit of time on the sporting clays course and refining that and being ready to go come hunting season so now what we're going to do we're going to change that out and we're going to move over to my left barrel and we're going to shoot it this is a modified choke and so i'm anticipating a much tighter constriction we're going to shoot at the exact same distance uh, the reason that i do this again is hunting covey birds there's a lot of late flushers right a lot of times you're shooting the birds that are furthest away on that initial rise and there's nothing worse you know you you, you dump both your barrels and all of a sudden two or three birds get up right next to you right um, and that is a benefit of having uh, a, a double trigger or double gun, um, having those two triggers. If I'm walking in on a dog, the dogs or the birds are behaving a little jumpy, maybe they've seen some pressure. I can be on my back trigger. I can be on the tighter choke right out the gate. Um, and then I can, I can switch back and forth. So I, I have the, the double guns or the, the side-by-sides have grown on me, the double triggers. Um, I shot over-unders forever and it was always just, you know, sometimes you were just trying to get to your second barrel. It was send a send out a, a shell of hope, and then you were then you were definitely trying to kill it at the distance. Um, but double guns and double triggers are really nice. So we're gonna switch over to this left barrel here and see how it performs. So we'll see if the if the jump from improved cylinder to modified is a substantial jump, and maybe we need to go improved cylinder, improved cylinder. I don't know. We'll find out. All right, so su super happy with how that shot here. Um, for the most part, I was able to, to keep the gun on the, on the target here. And again, this is a three quarter ounce of seven and a half. So I was out of a modified choke and really nice pattern here. Um, little bit tighter, uh, really no voids at all. I mean, that's, that's, that's gonna absolutely perform. You definitely better be on it. It's not gonna be quite as forgiving. Um, so look at this, cause I'm gonna show you the improved cylinder and show you a couple of the kind of the key differences. It's not a night and day difference, which to me is almost comforting because I know I'm gonna buy another five to 10 yards out of this choke. Um, but if I look at the improved cylinder, and again, I shot this a little bit low, so it's not a, an exact apples to apples visual example, um, but you can see kind of just through the top of this. And again, the center of the pattern was more down here, but just, just a handful more voids here if i can hold these side by side maybe that'll be a little bit better and you can kind of see on the back here um, they perform pretty pretty similarly um, i know this is going to hold a little bit tighter you can you can see that i don't know if that if you can see that exactly in the video but um, that's honestly what i would expect and what i would hope because again at 30 yards I may be, I may only have my dog at 10, 15 yards and I'm shooting that first bird at 20 to 30 yards, or maybe I miss him, he gets out to 30. Well, I know I still have, I still have the pattern density. I still have enough give on it um, that I'm able to make that shot. And maybe I knocked it on the first bird and then I'm progressing to another bird further forward in the covey that I need a little more reach on. Um, man, it's, it's gonna be hard for me to not want to shoot this combination um, especially for three quarter ounce shell. Usually I hunt with seven eighths ounce, which isn't a ton more pellets. I only think it's like 20 or 30 more, but it only takes a couple to kill them. So um, overall, really happy with those results. I'm probably gonna shoot a handful of hunting loads. I actually have one of those seven eighths uh, ounce hunting loads 
a couple of them in the truck and I have a couple more papers. So for kicks and giggles, now that we've got just an idea of how these are gonna perform this particular load, let's put two more shells on paper. We'll put a hunting load in each of the chambers and uh, pattern those side by side and see how they do. Let's share that with you guys. All right, so we are gonna shoot one of my personal favorite hand loads that has been an absolute performer for me in all of my other 28 gauges. We actually uh, just put out a video on how to reload this particular shell. It's, it is a seven eighths ounce. Um, this is seven and a halfs in here. Usually I hunt with seven and a halfs or um, sometimes transition to sixes or six and a half late season. But for patterning purposes, seven and a halfs, these are going about 1350, 1375. So this is, this is definitely a hotter load. Again, I'm a big believer in pattern density and the faster I can move those small pellets, the more that I'm um, increasing the lethality of the shell here. So we're gonna throw this in the improved cylinder that shot very well with the three quarter ounce and see if it holds true. See if we just up the density, up the hits or if it goes to hell in a hand basket, we'll find out. All right, so I'm pretty tickled uh, with the results here. This, this shell, it just continues to perform. And again, I, we shared this particular recipe. Man, it's just an absolute hammer. And there's just something about the 28 gauge that makes me smile. So this is, again, a 7 8 ounce load of seven and a halfs, going about 1350, 1375. And there isn't really a spot on this paper that doesn't have shot through it. And so the, the increasing the pellet count from three quarter ounce to seven eighths didn't blow, blow it out. It wasn't over constricted. It was, we weren't trying to push too much lead through there that it blew out. Nice thing about lead is it does kind of deform as it comes down. Um, man, that is just so hard to beat. Something like that at, at 30 yards, again, improved cylinder. That is a, that's a thumper that makes me super, super happy. Um, I'll, I'll continue to do a little more testing, but just for the sake of this video and keeping it a little bit shorter, now we'll put that same hand load in the modified barrel and we'll fire one down there and hope to see similar performance. Should be a hair tighter. Should see a lot of hits. I think I saw a tree fall by. <laughs> <laughs> behind the target there all right so this is the um this is the modified barrel that i just shot this is my improved cylinder very very similar now i know this is a small piece of paper if i was gonna go above and beyond really in my patterning i would probably use a full-size backer and i mean a big sheet of paper just to see the overall pattern distribution i obviously use these as kind of a more i guess a starting point a little bit more basic, something that your average guy is gonna be able to go do. Not everybody wants to go buy a giant roll of parchment paper and go do that, but you can get a paper plate. You can go buy these. I bought these, I think, from Sportsman's Warehouse. I like them because they have um, the data. I can collect data just on the bottom here. I can put the date, I can put the gun, I can put the choke, I can put the shot shell. You can see there are more, I think I was off just a little bit um, to the left. So this is kind of the fringe edge of it. Um, but very very similar look and feel here but if i look to the core of the pattern there's definitely a higher density here which i would expect from a modified obviously it's a tighter constriction and should be shooting tighter at the same distance as an improved cylinder and then i'll just show you the improved cylinder again and flip that around again not bad at all i would say at 30 yards that this improved cylinder is probably as tight as i would want it uh, fortunately, I have doubles of each choke. So sometimes you find a gun and a choke combination, I may shoot improved cylinder on both barrels. A um, little more testing to be done. Like I said, I think, I think I can open it up with this hunting load to a skeet for that closer shot. But overall, good to see the gun shoot well, good to see this hand load continue to perform and know that factory performs with it as well. But I think this is a great starting point to just simply being able to understand how your gun is working, how it's shooting for you. This is just such important knowledge. You would be surprised how, how different certain shot shells can be and how different certain chokes can be. Again, you could they could make two of this gun back to back and it may not shoot the exact same. And so being able to go out, spend a little bit of time in the field, 
it's not an expensive thing to do. If you can buy a box of shells, you can buy, you know, shoot a newspaper for all that it matters and then hold it up to the sunlight to see the holes in it. There's a lot of ways to go about this. And so we would just challenge and encourage you to better understand your equipment. It helps you be a better hunter, but ethically it makes you a better hunter as well. Um, you're gonna know that at the distances that you need to be shooting at, you're gonna be able to cleanly and swiftly kill birds. We're, not, we're gonna have less cripples in the field. We're gonna recover more of those birds, be able to enjoy them as meals and just have a better overall experience. So thank you for taking the time to watch this. Um, hope you guys learned something. Hopefully um, this is something that again, you can go implement. Knowledge is power in the field. Thanks for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe. God bless.